Uh, very good morning, dear students. Uh, welcome back. Today, I will continue the lesson for class 10 A, B, and C. And the subject that I'm doing is geography. I do hope my dear students uh, have revised the lesson uh, of the previous chapters and the lesson of this chapter also as well, which I had posted earlier. And I was doing the chapter that is natural vegetation. So I hope you have gone through the videos and at least uh, you have uh, started doing the 10 years questions and answers for the chapters which I have already told you. So today I will continue with this chapter that is natural vegetation. Uh, we have done the different types of uh, forest uh, of our country and today we will do that is uh, the next part that is conservation. Conservation of forest. Now why do we need to conserve the forest? Now forest needs to be conserved because of various reasons. Firstly it is so very important to us because it gives us oxygen. It adds oxygen to the atmosphere, see, which is so very important for our existence. Besides that it adds water to the atmosphere through the process called as transpiration. Water evaporates from the leaves whereby adding moisture to the air which ultimately we get in the form of rainfall. So it adds moisture to the atmosphere. It cools the temperature down of a region. It holds the soil from being eroded. It prevents soil erosion. See? Then also uh, we get, uh, for instance, the advantages is that even the soil increases the fertility of the soil. Uh, sorry, the forest increases the fertility. When the leaves fall down, they turn into humus. And thereby the soil becomes rich. It turns into humus, which increases the fertility of the soil. Besides that, uh, the forest also gives various products. It gives employment see, to the people. Uh, these are the various ways. The forest is also the place where the birds and animals take shelter. So these are the various reasons why we need to conserve the forest. Now, uh, why? Okay, forests have been depleted. Why are the forests being de destroyed? Why have the forests been depleted? The forests have been depleted because of various reasons. Firstly, it's because of the increase in population. and agriculture. Increase in population as more and more people are, are, are there in a region, more and more forests are cleared for settlement, for converting the land into agricultural feed so that more and more crops can be grown. So the first reason why the forests are being destroyed, are being removed is because of the increase in population whereby turning the forest land into agricultural feed. That's number one. Number two is also because of uh, the practice of shifting agriculture. Because of the practice of shifting cultivation also, the forests are being destroyed. That is uh, number two. Then we also have because of, for instance, number three is overgrazing of animals. Overgrazing of animals. Number three is there, number three, overgrazing animals. Then also we have uh, the timber and fuel that we get. Number four, timber and fuel that we get from the forest because of which more and more forest is being destroyed. Then we have construction of river valley projects as well. See, construction of river valley projects are also there because of which the forests are being uh, destroyed. Industrialization, see, urbanization. Industrialization, urbanization are the various reasons why the forests are being depleted. See, because of the increase in population, more and more areas are cut down, more and more forests are cut down for settlement purpose, for turning them into agricultural fields. More and more forests are being destroyed because of shifting cultivation, going from place to place, destroying the forest, whereby converting the lands into agricultural field. Because of overgrazing of animals also, the vegetation cover gets destroyed. See, there, therefore, what, thereby what happens is the forest ultimately is removed, destroyed. Timber and fuel, fuel that the people constantly go and cut trees for timber and fuel is also another reason why forests are being destroyed. Then industrialization and urbanization is also one of the major causes for destruction of forest. 
Therefore, it is essential to understand the different methods for the conservation of forest. The methods are given below. So why do we need or what are the essential ways in which we can conserve the forest? What are the essential ways? There are various ways in which the forest can be conserved. The first one is undertaking silviculture. Undertaking silviculture. That means uh, planting, uh, it's a science of planting trees for sustained yield. Undertaking silviculture is basically a science of planting trees for sustained yield. That's number one in which we can conserve the forest. Number one. Number two is that uh, we should have a strict prohibition. Prohibition of cutting down trees. Number two is that there should be a strict prohibition in cutting down the trees. That means if people are just given permission to just go and cut trees everywhere, means within no time the forest gets destroyed. So the government should yes impose a very strict law so that the forest cannot be destroyed very easily. So that people cannot just go and cut the trees down. So a strict prohibition of cutting down trees should be implemented by the government. Then we can also have establishment of national parks and sanctuaries. Establishment of national parks and sanctuaries is also another way in which we can, uh, for instance, uh, preserve the forest. See, undertaking silviculture is one of the ways in which we can protect the forest. Strict prohibition of cutting down the trees by the government is also another way to conserve the forest, protect the forest. Then, establishment of national parks and wildlife sanctuaries will also protect the animals at the same time protect the forest. See? undertaking or establishing establishing national parks and wildlife sanctuaries sanctuaries number four is also preventing forest fires forest fires preventing forest fires is number four preventing forest fire is number four whereby we can uh, what to say uh, protect the forest Number five is educating, educating people regarding the importance of forest, importance of forest and its relation with the environment. See number five, educating people about the importance of forest and its uh, and its uh, importance uh, of the forest and its relation with the environment. Why is forest so very important with the environment? See, it gives us oxygen, which is so very essential for our existence. The other day, I was just going through one of the uh, Facebook uh, posts, and then there I happened to see a, a video post, of maybe from Delhi, where an old man was uh, discharged from the hospital after uh, being treated by the uh, uh, treated from being treated from corona virus so as he was going out then he was called back to pay a certain amount of money there was some due there maybe around eight to ten thousand so uh, thirteen thousand was there so when he went to inquire what was that uh, money for then they said that this was for the gas or oxygen that he had used uh, for his uh, treatment so he, he, you know, he literally, literally thanked and cried and thanked the nature, the environment. Because for a very short duration, he was admitted in the hospital and whereby he was, uh, you know, forced to take the artificial supply of oxygen, where he had to pay around, almost around 13,000. But for his entire life, he has been taking oxygen from the mother nature. At that too, at the, at the cost of nothing, no cost. See? So therefore, he thanks the Mother Nature for providing oxygen without any cost for so many years. So that is why it's so very important to take care of our forest. See, people are paying money for oxygen in the hospitals. But then we, 
are getting oxygen from the mother nature. That is why it is so very important to take care of our forest. So these are some of the reasons why we need to uh, conserve forest. See, undertaking silviculture, some of the ways, strict prohibition on uh, cutting down trees, establishment of national parks and sanctuaries, then uh, what is it? Pre uh, preventing forest fires, educating people about the importance of forest and its in, uh, relation with the uh, environment. There are very few, among the few countries, India is one of the countries to establish national forest policy. See, among the few countries, India is the country to establish national forest policy. That was established in 1952, which was again revised in 1988. 1988. Among the many countries, a few countries, India is one of the countries to establish the National Forest Policy, which was established in 1952 and which was again revised in the year 1988. Now the main, main objective of this National Forest Policy is to protect, protection of the forest, of the forest. Number two is conservation conservation of forest and number three is development development of forest see these are the three important things that we have to keep in mind protection of forest conservation of forest and development of forest so the national forest policy mainly focused in the protection of forest how to protect the forest, what are the ways in which we can protect the forest, how can we conserve the forest and then what are the ways in which we can develop the forest, development of the forest. So these are the three important points that were there in the national forest policy. Okay, now uh, we go a little bit further ahead. So based on the national forest policy conservation program, the government of India started various uh, ways and programs in order to conserve the forest and one of them is uh, the way called as the social forestry so as i said see based on the national forest policy conservation program the government of india started a program started a, a way um, a, what to say a, a method a started a program or a technique to conserve the forest and one of them is through the process called as the social forestry. Now what is social forestry and when was it established? It was established in the year 1976. This was established in the year 1976, social forestry. Now the main aim of this uh, for social forestry or how did it function? This social forestry basically functioned between the government and the uh, people. There was a joint venture. A collaboration or a team set up whereby the government and the people together got themselves together and worked together whereby they could uh, take benefits from the forest and at the same time take care of the forest as well so the government and the people rural people benefited from this uh, program whatever uh, products they could take from the forest the village rural people could use it and sell it but at the same time they needed to conserve the forest so this was in a joint venture with the government of India and the rural population that is social forestry now what is the aim or main aim of this forestry what is the main aim of this social forestry the first one is remove pressure aim number one remove pressure from the uh, lands remove pressure from the forest that's number one one of the main aims of social forestry is to remove pressure from the forest number two is we have is to uh, rec uh, rec claim back we get a uh, to get claim back we say utilize all vacant and fallow land see utilize all vacant and fallow land That means those lands which are just left without anything, bare, without any growth of vegetation, they were uh, reclaimed back, they were taken back and then they were uh, planted trees and saplings and so on. So 
utilization of vacant and fallow land was another one. Then we also have is planting of trees. Planting of trees, number three. Planting of trees, trees along the uh, this edges of the agricultural field, planting trees along the roadside, planting trees along the riverside, planting trees along the railway lines. This was another. This was also another way or aim of the social forestry. That's number three. Then we had is providing common man with timber, providing common people with timber. Then. Conservation, providing efficient conservation of soil and water, and development of cottage and textile industry, and also providing employment. So the aim of this uh, social forestry was remove pressure from the forest, utilize vacant and fallow land, then uh, planting of trees, utilization of vacant and fallow land, planting of trees, see in and around the uh, roads, riversides, agricultural fields, railway tracks, and so on. Then also we had was uh, providing the common man with timber, fuel, providing them employment, developing cottage industries. So these were the aims of the social forestry. Now we can classify social forestry into different types. So I'll just uh, rub this out. Social forestry. We can classify social forestry into different types. The first one which we have is the farm forestry. See, social forestry can be classified or divided into four types. The first one is farm forestry. Now, what is this farm forestry? In this farm forestry, what the farmers do is they uh, practice their own cultivation of crops, they keep cattle in their farms, but at the same time, they plant trees so that uh, they could use the uh, timber, they could use fuel, uh, fuel for firewood or fire from the forest or tree that they are planting. At the same time, you know, giving shade to the crops that they are planting. So this is called as farm forestry where the farmers are encouraged to plant trees so that, you know, it benefits them besides giving shade to their crops. It also can be utilized for various uh, fuel products as well. So that is the first one that is farm forestry. Then we have the second one is community forestry. Now in this community forestry, what the people do is, the community itself, the entire society, the entire people of a particular region, particular, uh, I would say, location, community, what they do is, they take care of their forest. They take care of the forest. But at the same time, the government will provide them with saplings, with some, uh, what to say, uh, fertilizers, see, seedlings will be provided by the government. But the main aim of the community people is to take care of the forest. So that is community forestry. Then we have the third one, that is extension forestry. Extension forestry. Now this extension forestry is basically what happens is uh, planting trees in the wasteland, in the common land where there's no trees growing, so that you can get more areas under forest. So extending the forest. This is called as extension forestry, where planting more trees, increasing the forest uh, products, uh, sorry, increasing the forest area under cultivation by planting more and more trees. That is called as extension forestry. Then we have the last one that is agro. Agroforestry. Okay. Now this agroforestry is basically what happens is uh, the farmers practice agriculture. See, practice agriculture. At the same time what they do is uh, they practice agriculture at the same time what they do is they even plant trees. Planting trees along with the uh, cattle and also uh, what do you say? Uh, growing crops that is called as agroforestry. Agriculture and forestry mixed together is called as agroforestry. It's somewhat like farm forestry. Somewhat like farm forestry. We have is agroforestry. Now, what are the objectives of agroforestry? We have some objectives here to reduce pressure from the forest, to check soil erosion, to increase the fertility of the soil, to maintain ecological balance, and also to make use of the available resource. So, these are the advantages of agroforestry to make the best use of the forest, to increase the fertility, 
to reduce soil erosion, uh, to reduce pressure from the forest, see? and also to make the best use of the resource that is present from the forest. These are the aims or objectives of the <coughs> forestry. Now, what are the advantages? That means, what plus point do we get? The aims I just told you reduce pressure from the forest, it uh, checks soil erosion, it increases the fertility of the soil. You know, they utilize uh, resources, various resources, uh, resources are obtained from the forest. So, what advantage do we get from the agroforestry? Some of the advantages is that they provide long term economical benefit. Long term economical benefit. Number two is they provide year round production. Number three, they provide resources like firewood, see, animal fodder, see, construction materials, increase soil fertility, and then also reduce pollution and global warming. So these are the advantages that we get from agroforestry. See, it reduces pollution and global warming. See, it gives various firewood, various products, construction materials from the forest. See, it increases the economy see, of the farmers, economic stability. Then it gives uh, products it gives products throughout the year, it gives products throughout the year. So these are the advantages that we get from agroforestry. Now the last part here, problems faced in, India, in, in India's social forestry effort. What are the problems faced by the social forestry? See this social forestry basically as I said was initiated for the betterment of the people, farmers, the rural people and at the same time you know uh, it helps uh, the government as well. But what are the drawbacks? What are the disadvantages here? See, uncertainty of coordination between the government and the departments. There are some uh, lack of coordination between the government and the departments because of which the farmers, you know, uh, uh, don't exactly know certain things. They are misguided. That's number one. Number two is lack of information regarding existing land, demand of fuel, fuel wood and fodder, etc. Lack of information of existing land, how many areas are there, how much area is there, fodder, fuel and so on for the farmers. That is another disadvantage. Number three is lack of awareness among villagers about government's plan. Number three is lack of villagers idea on the government's plans and programs. So these are some of the disadvantages of the uh, social forestry program. So this is all I have today dear students uh, to cover and this brings to the end of this chapter natural vegetation. I do hope that you will uh, go through this lesson as well and uh, revise the lessons whichever are given to you and please make sure you study and do your assignments regularly. Thank you so much and have a good day.